Hello and welcome to Ho Chi Minh City. I don't know how well you can hear me, the traffic is insane. So, change of plans. I'm in Ho Chi Minh City. I, I arrived and then I found out that they, uh, the paperwork is not ready, uh, which is interesting. So now I must stay an extra day, so I'm not going on Sunday, now I'm going on Monday. Side recommendation, side tip to you is if your visa is going to expire, Make sure you go and get a new visa stamp in advance. At least try to shoot for like a week in advance before the time before you need to have the stamp. Because if there's any issues, unforeseen issues, you may think everything will be great and, and maybe it will be, but if something does go wrong, then you're kind of screwed. Then when you arrive and you get a stamp, they're either going to say, no, we don't want you back because you overstayed your visit, or option B, they're going to say, okay, but you are going to pay a late fee and I have no idea what that is. So try to plan ahead. When you go to Mok Bai, uh, it's very confusing. There's two different buildings. On the Vietnam side, things are chaotic, hectic, unlabeled, confusing, and it's a new building. They just moved from the grocery store, abandoned grocery store building, to a new building. It's nice, but the labeling is, is very poor, and, uh, and they speak very little to no English at all, um, so it's very difficult to, to do it. When I was there, it was three hours last time and it was unbelievably confusing. Had I not bumped into another foreigner who had did it many, many times before, I would have been utterly lost and confused. It was mind-blowing. The unorganization of the Vietnam side is mind-boggling. The second you cross over into Cambodia, they're like, hello, welcome, come on in. How can we help you? <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I, I overpaid on accident to Cambodia. Um, and he gave me 10 extra dollars back. He says, no, 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 you gave me too much. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. On the Vietnam side, I gave him $30. The total should have been 25. They tried to calculate how much money they should return back to me, which was five US dollars. Um, they could not figure it out on a calculator. Um, and so they just gave up and they said, okay, next person. Uh, they couldn't figure out how to convert money, which is like first grade math or second grade math. I don't know. but. Anyway, so it gets interesting. I, my forewarning to you is when you go and something weird happens, try not to make a big scene. $5 is $5. I'm happy I got the stamp. And yes, I got, uh, I guess I got ripped off or overcharged by the government, but I got a stamp, so that's all I wanted. Anyway, um, hopefully the next time I talk to you, I will show you how to maneuver around the Mokbai area. So it's about eight o'clock in the morning. I'm a little bit behind schedule. The, the grab bike took so long to find me. The bus station is just beyond these trees. I'm gonna find a little bit of breakfast somewhere and then I'll show you what bus to get on. I'm in the bus station. It looks like this. There's many entrance points over here, over there, over there. So just walk in. You're surrounded by buses. They all have very, very large numbers. You're looking for bus 703. Last time it was over here, so I'm going to check. There's a waiting area over over here for buses that cycle, um, and they always come every every two minutes. There's another bus, but the bus you're looking for is not at that bus station. I waited there for an hour and a half. They kept telling me the bus is coming, the bus is coming. It never did. Finally, someone says, "No, no, no! You must go find it over here because it doesn't circle." So that was convenient. Um, but I'm telling you, you must find the bus. Last time it was right here, it's not here. So I'm going to look around and uh, I'll meet you on the bus. Okay, so I found the bus. 7.03, I guess we can board now. Um, I'm gonna show you what documents that you need. Okay, so I made it on the bus within the first 30 seconds of being on the bus. It starts to take off. I didn't plan the time it leaves. From what I've heard, every hour or every hour and a half, something like that. I don't know the exact time, so most likely when you show up, you probably have to wait. I think I got incredibly lucky. Last time I had to wait 40 minutes on the hot bus with no AC before it started to move. Um, literally 30 seconds um, and it started to move. But this is what you need. So you need three mug shots. Uh, what is this, two by two? I don't know. Um, passport size photos. Um, totally horrible, but uh, does the trick. So you need, I've read three and I've read two. Last time, I swear, they only took one. So I don't know, but have three just because. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is your 
invitation letter. Remember when you came to Vietnam the first time, you had to have an invitation letter prepared? Do the exact same thing. There's no difference. Do the exact same thing. Get another one for three months or however long you want to stay. Uh, and that's it. Have that prepared. Uh, and then number three, you will need your passport. Uh, and then I guess number four, you need money. So bring about $100. 50% um, of that should be US currency. When you go to Cambodia, they accept US dollars, and I believe they're not going to accept Vietnamese dong. So you want to have US cash with you. Um, I unfortunately only have 40 US dollars with me. Um, and I have the rest in Vietnamese dong. So I don't know, maybe they don't accept Vietnamese dong in Vietnam. I hope they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. But uh, that's what you need. Let's go. Oh, by the way, this is what it looks like. I have one, two, three, four, five people on this ginormous bus. And we're stuck. We can't move. We're in a traffic jam. This is awesome. But, uh, and it's AC, so it's actually not... It's warm in here because of the sun, but uh, I feel AC on, so you're not going to sweat to death. What else? I think that's it for now. I forgot to tell you the cost of the bus as of right now. Um, it is 40,000 Vietnamese dong each way, so 40,000 to Mach Bai, Mach Bai to Ho Chi Minh, 40,000, so 80,000 total. Um, you pay two separate times, you get on the bus, you sit down, the bus starts to go, and at some point during the trip, someone will come up to you and ask you for money and give you a ticket. So do not search for a ticket anywhere because they don't sell them. You must come on the bus, you must sit, and they will come to you at your seat. Okay, so it's the very, very last stop. And when you get off the bus, there'll be 100 people. All of those people are motorbike taxi drivers and they all are shouting at you, wanting to bring you to the border. You're more than welcome to accept. It's usually like a dollar, but I want you to understand where to go if you do not ride a motorbike. Um, so this is what it looks like over here. This guy just wants my business. He keeps cutting me off. Okay. Um, but all you need to do is cut through here and the, there used to be a building way over here. It is not here anymore. Um, it was in an old abandoned grocery store. That's what I had heard. But now you just walk through, walk through this, I don't know what this is. You just walk through and you walk all the way to the building uh, and I'll show you. This guy is just following next to me until I say yes, which I'm not going to. I just finished walking through the parking lot. Once you get to the street, you go this way. And you can see it says, Mach Bai. I don't know what it says, but you go this way. But you must be careful because when you walk, there's a lot of garbage and things to trip over and holes to step in and the traffic always seems to come very, very close to you. So anyway, you just walk this way. Once I get inside, I cannot film. So I will do my best to describe after I go through. Okay, so when you go into the building, you stick to the right side, and that is where the exit stamp booth is. You'll see every, the big line, just wait in the line. It'll say exit above. Um, and then when you finished, you walk outside just like I did. Uh, and then you turn left and you go this way. Um, again, you can take almost any motorbike. They're probably everywhere for usually one dollar and they'll take you to the building. But the building is right there. You can see the tall one that's orange. Um, anyway, so let's go to Cambodia. Okay, now that we are here, you go in this little building over here. You just walk through the street like you're a car. It's the craziest thing and just try not to get hit. So this is going to be probably the most important part of this video, so pay close attention and replay the video a couple times if you need to. So you go in to the Cambodia building before you go in, just to the right, you're going to see that little booth. Maybe you've seen it a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> a little booth and you get one piece of paper from there. You're going to go inside and fill out that piece of paper. 
Uh, it's important that you go inside because if you stay outside, um, everybody tries to come after you and help and, and charge you money for assisting you in filling out this very simple form. So um, just go inside, say, no, I want to go into the AC and then they'll leave you alone. Uh, you fill out that paperwork, give them your picture and bring it back outside to that small booth. Very important because there's no labeling and nobody really tells you what to do. So, um, so you're going to fill out that big form, bring it back out there with your picture and your visa and then you pay money. Uh, for a tourist visa in Cambodia, it should be $30 if you're an American, I'm sure many other countries also. Um, and then, after you fill that out, you should have another card. They either give it to you or you go inside and ask for one. Um, uh, you're going to fill out another card. When you fill that card out, you're going to write down the visa number that you just received in your passport. In your passport, they, they gave you a... Uh, they gave you a visa. The visa number on that stamp is what you're going to write down on the second piece of paper. Once that piece of paper is filled out, you then walk up to the man um, at the booth inside the building and he stamps everything again, does his thing, and then you're free to leave. Once you're free to leave, this is where I could not film. You follow the trail, you exit the building, you exit the building and you can go right or left. Go, you're going to go out the door like this, turn left, go around the building again, and there's that's the exit stamp booth. I just went there and they said, oh, I'm sorry, you cannot go back to Vietnam. I said, what? Yeah, you cannot go. Um, and it became a thing. You must go all the way into the middle of Cambodia to fill out a form. I'm like, what? This is crazy. And then I pulled out the invitation letter. He's like, ah, you have an invitation letter. I'm like, yeah. Well, you didn't ask for it. I didn't know you wanted. He said, okay, good, exit stamp, finished. So anyway, now I'm walking back from Cambodia to, to Vietnam, where I'm going to receive another visa, pay more money to receive another visa and present them my invitation letter. Uh, and then everything should be finished. So hopefully that makes sense. Finished, complete. It was quicker this time, took maybe an hour and a half total from the time I started to the time I finished. When you exit, come down the exit ramp and you are right here at the beginning where we started again. Now, um, you just continue walking this way and you go back to the place that you came from. They should be, there should be a bus that comes every maybe 30 or 40 minutes. The same bus that dropped you off, they cycle and they come back um, and they pick you up. While you wait there, you may have many, many people saying, hey, hey, I'll take you by taxi all the way to uh, Ho Chi Minh City. If you want to do that, go for it, but it's much cheaper, 40,000 Vietnamese dong, to ride the bus, or you can pay like 100,000 per person to take your own private taxi. Oh yeah, don't forget, as you're walking this way, remember, it's going to look different, you're going to be confused. Just keep walking this way and go back in the same parking lot that you went before. When you're inside there, you're going to have many, many people in blue uniforms and they even have ID badges saying, here, here, we'll fill this paperwork out for you. I've heard horror stories on the internet so many times of if you let them do it, they say, no money, no money. But after you're finished, they ask you for money or say that, oh, you must pay, you must pay. And then they make a big scene or make a big problem that you're not paying, even though they told you that it was free. So. I don't trust them, I will not trust them, and I'm assuming you probably shouldn't either. But if you want to pay a lot more, I've heard it was like $40 extra, so which is insanity. Understand in this area, most people, the average income in, in, in entire Vietnam is five US dollars a day. So if you're paying $40 additional for something that takes four minutes to fill out, oh, my God, God um, you're just being ripped off. Unimaginable. Another thing, when I was in there, it cost $35 instead of $25 like it should because the official decides that he wants more money. So he says, nope, it's $35, not $25. How do you argue with a Vietnam official? You don't. You just bend over, touch your toes, and get raped. So it's only 10 extra dollars, but again, that's, that's like a day and a half worth of income for him, just alone. So anyway, I think that's it. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, post them below. Make sure you check the comments because the question might be answered already. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I have so many more travel videos coming. Remember guys, time is running out. Start living. Take care.